club, there's gonna be some painting and drawing Art club, there's gonna be some painting and drawing Some of the time we might do drawing and painting But most of the time we will do painting and drawing Grab a pencil, grab a brush, we're about to do Art club! Hello and welcome back to another art club. Unfortunately, I've got bad news today. I can't find my cap. Uh, I've tried to find some things that sound a bit like cap. I've got a cat and a cup. Uh, the cup looks quite good, but doesn't stay on very well. Uh, the cat is much more stable. So I'll probably go with that today. Uh, actually, let's put the cup down here. Ooh. Oh dear, that's broken. Oh, but I have found my cap. We can get on with Art Club now. Welcome to episode nine. Who'd have thought we'd have made it nine episodes into Art Club? Let me know if you've watched them all. Here's a little bit of trivia for you. Did you know that nine is the German word for no? That's the education noise. So every time something educational happens, I play that noise just to warn you, you know, because I don't really like these shows that sneak in education. So if there is any learning in this show, I will point it out so you're not being tricked, basically. If there are any German people watching today, uh, bonjour. I should probably point out, if you are new to this, that the first rule of Art Club is there are nine rules. Right, enough stupidity. Let's get on with the show. I'm going to start putting up your Wonderful pictures from last week here. We had loads of fantastic robotic otters. We had loads of absolutely brilliant potions. So many great sculptures I saw as well. Also, one of you will have won my robotic otter from last week. The lucky person's name should be coming up somewhere around here. If that is you, have a look in the description to this video and it'll tell you what you need to do. Okay, so what do I need to say? First of all, I know quite a lot of you will watch this and haven't clicked subscribe. If you haven't clicked subscribe, please do that. It's completely free. All it means is that you just get reminders. So when Art Club comes up or if I do like a special episode, you get a reminder. So uh, get your mums and dads to click subscribe. Also, I'd really love it if we could get up to 4,000 subscribers. Oh yeah, don't forget about the certificate as well. There's a certificate if you are a subscriber. It looks like this. Uh, download it from the link in the description again. But yeah, I was saying I'd love to get up to 4,000 subscribers. So what I'd really love for you to do is to share this. Share it with your teachers, share it with your friends. You know, if every single person shared it with three other people, that would mean that I would have a really tricky maths problem to do, but I'm sure it's gonna be a good thing and we would like get loads more subscribers. So please do share it. We've got a great show lined up for you today. We're learning all about pointillism. Sounds fancy. It's basically just another fancy word for making pictures out of dots. What else are we doing? Oh, we've got a brilliant two-part drawing. And there's going to be loads more of your jokes, so carry on watching. Grab a pencil, grab a brush, we're about to do Art Club! Right, it's time for the two-part drawing challenge. If you've watched any of the art clubs up to now, you will know that we start off by doing one bit now and then we finish off that drawing at the end. And it's always quite a fun thing to draw. This week, we're gonna be drawing a pirate parrot and it's gonna have a companion as well. Uh, we'll do the pirate parrot first and we'll do the second part at the end, like I just said. <laughs> Don't know why I repeated that. What you'll need is a sheet of paper and something to draw with. I've got my trusty big brush pen here. It's kind of like a big fat brush pen. I might at some point go to my smaller brush pen. I've got another one here. To be honest, you can use whatever you want to use. Use a pencil, use a paintbrush, use a crayon, whatever you want. Uh, as I always say, the first rule of Art Club is there are nine rules. So let's get going. I've got my piece of paper landscape. So it's gonna be like this. I'm gonna start by doing the parrot. And we'll start by doing the pirate hat on the parrot and I'll do a straight line that kind of goes around about there. And then we do two lines that go off it like that. Uh, it looks like a rectangle, but now instead of a straight line, we're gonna do a kind of a curved line, a bit of a hump, a bit like the hump in a camel. And that's the basic shape of a pirate's hat. Uh, now we're gonna do the parrot. The parrot I've simplified quite a bit. So I do a line that goes straight down to about there. And the beak is gonna be coming out of here. 
and I do a curved line for the beak and then I do another curved line that kind of goes like that and meets the point of the beak and then I do a line that goes down a bit and then up to here that's going to be its mouth its mouth's going to be slightly open because it's going to be either saying something or possibly eating something I'm not entirely sure just yet we do a curved line here that goes there and then the last bit kind of comes up to there now the rest of the body comes down to about there and I draw a line that goes along so it's a bit of a rectangular kind of parrot and then his wing is a curve shape and because he's a pirate parrot I'm going to give him an eye patch so the eye patch is a semicircle and we carry the strap along like so. Now we're gonna give him a wooden leg. So the wooden leg is gonna be another semicircle there with a bit that comes off like that. And we'll give him an actual proper parrot's leg as well, which is two lines. And then the kind of the claw of the parrot goes like that. And then we do one claw at the back and then these three claws at the front. All he needs now is a tail. So for the tail, I'm just going to do a couple of little triangles. So one that goes off there, and another that goes there. And that's your pirate parrot. So come back at the end, we'll put a skull and crossbones on his hat, and we'll also give him uh, a companion, let's just say. Why did the traffic light go red? because a driver saw it changing in the middle of the road. <laughs> and that joke has come from Alison Godwin. That was quite funny, wasn't it? Right, what we're gonna do now is something that I think is quite important. It's to do with drawing a face, especially drawing cartoon faces. What do you think the most important part of the face is? People would probably say eyes or nose or the mouth. Actually, it's the eyebrows. And I'm gonna show you now exactly what I mean. I like to think they're the most expressive part of the face. So I'm gonna grab my pen and I'm gonna draw a set of eyes here. And let's do another set of eyes here. And let's do some more here. And some more here. And a few more here. So first of all, let's look at kind of regular everyday eyebrows. I would draw them like this, just like a little slight curve. However, if that character was a bit shocked or a bit surprised, I would do the same thing, possibly make them a bit more curved, but have them higher up. Like that. It's almost like he's had some interesting news, like, hmm. If they're really shocked, I'm gonna get my other pen for this. What I would then do, is add a little bit of a line like that. Because when you're really lifting your eyebrows, you get those lines in your head. You're... So immediately we've gone from happy to shocked to really surprised. Next, I'm gonna look at what happens if you put eyebrows on top of the eyes, just straight across. I think that looks a bit bored, a bit hmm, fed up. However, if you then take those lines and you tilt them this way, your character immediately looks quite sad. If you want to turn that sad into worried, add some little lines like that. It goes from being sad to being worried. Now we're gonna look at angry. If you do those sad ones in the opposite direction, like that, that makes your characters really angry. So we'll do some angry ones here, look at that. He's angry. And also, you can do another kind of angry where it kind of curves and then curves up in the middle a bit. I'll show you what I mean. So it goes like this. And just curves up in the middle and in the same, the opposite way. There is actually one more that I haven't told you. So I'll draw one more set of eyes here. And this one is called intrigued. So that means when you're like really interested and like, hmm, tell me more. And what you do with that is one eyebrow is like this one, and then the other one is like that, but a bit higher up. So you do one like this, and then the next one is a bit higher up. And that expression is almost going, hmm, interesting. And there you go, 
two simple dots for eyes, but eight or nine different expressions, all depending on how you draw the eyebrows. Have fun practicing with your own comic faces with lots of different eyebrows and lots of different expressions. Which dinosaur could jump higher than a house? All of them. Houses can't jump. <laughs> and that joke has come from Jonas. Right, it's time for our one minute artist bit. Uh, this is quite educational, so I'll play the horn now. And this week's artist is Georges Surat. One minute artist, Georges Surat. Georges Surat was a post-impressionist artist born in France in 1859. He is best known for creating the painting technique known as pointillism. Pointillism is a painting technique where lots of small dots of colour are overlaid and applied in patterns to form different images and colours. This is one of the most famous of his paintings known as the Bathers at Asnières. His paintings work in a similar way to a TV screen or computer. When you look at them really closely you see lots and lots of tiny dots. Surat had a wife and child that he kept secret from his own mother. Probably his most famous piece of work is A Sunday Afternoon on the Island of La Grande Jatte. He must have had a lot of patience as some of his paintings took years to finish. Five, and that four, is Georges Surat in a minute. Two, one. Well, there you go. I hope you've not learned too much, just a little bit. Uh, we're gonna do a bit of pointillism now. For pointillism, you need to remember the seven Ps, okay? So they are, if I can remember them, you'll need a pack of pens or paints and plenty of patience and a picture of a pineapple. I don't know, there's only five Ps, okay? Just remember the five Ps, okay? Pack of pens or paints and plenty of patience. You can have a picture of a pineapple or a porcupine or whatever if it makes you feel good. So I've got a sheet of paper. Now because pointillism takes quite a long time, I'm actually folding this sheet of A4 paper in half because you can do an A4 if you like. If you've got like a big uh, paint brushes that you're using to do this pointillism, you can use a big sheet, but I'm gonna be using pens mainly, so I'm gonna fold mine in half like this. And I'm gonna have mine portrait like this. Now, Surat used to do quite a lot of uh, rivers and grassy scenes and things like that. So I'm gonna do a scene. I'm gonna do like a, a bit of a landscape, even though mine's gonna be in portrait. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm missing out on a holiday this year uh, because of something that happens to be going on at the moment that's quite big and it's in the news a lot. I don't know if you've heard of it. I'm missing out on a couple of holidays actually. One of them was to Edinburgh in Scotland and the other one was to visit my sister who lives in Mallorca in a place called Porto Pienza. Hopefully I've pronounced that right. She'll let me know if I haven't. Hello if you're watching. So in both of those places, I like to visit the beach. Edinburgh has got a lovely beach, so has Mallorca. They've got lovely beaches all around Mallorca. I'm gonna do a beach scene. For this, I'm gonna be using all of my different pens. I've got loads of pens. Some of them are quite fancy and were quite expensive. Some of them I got from like pound stores. And I'll tell you what, I think some of the pound store ones are as good as my expensive ones for pointillism. And it will take quite a while to do this, so you do need a bit of patience, but the effect that you get is pretty cool. So get all your pens. Actually, I like these pens that are up here. I don't know if you can see them. These are quite good ones. I like them because they're all on like a ring and you don't lose the lids because the lids stay attached. So it's almost like a set of keys. So I really do like these. Now, I'm going to be doing the C. I'm going to be doing the C in mine. So I'm going to start off with some blues. So I'm gonna kind of start by using a dark blue. And again, yours doesn't have to be the sea. Yours can be wherever you want to be. And it could be perhaps a holiday that you're missing out on. It could be your garden. It could be a park that you like to visit. But I'm gonna be drawing like a, a seascape. And I'm just gonna start by doing a line of blue dots and then a couple of dots above and below that line. And I'm just gonna, it doesn't matter if you overlap a few dots, uh, this is going to be the top of my C, so I think I'll probably make this top line quite 
dot heavy. The closer you put the dots together, the darker your colour will be, and the sort of more colour and the more intense. So the top line I'll make kind of quite close together the dots, and then as the dots go down, I'll make them a little bit more spaced out. And then as I get further down, I'll do like another couple of rows that are even more spaced out. And then even further. And hopefully what you should start to see is that it blends from top to bottom. It starts to look darker and then lighter as it goes down. Your dots don't have to be like precise. And I mean, you can work on this as much or as little as you like. You can always go back and add more of any colour at any point. Uh, I've got another blue here. Uh, what pointer lists used to do was overlay the dots and as you overlay them, they kind of blend together. So I'm going to do the same kind of thing where I start by doing quite a solid row with this one at the top and then just blend it so that they get further and further apart as it goes down. I'm going to quickly swap pens, slightly bigger dots these ones, and because the sea isn't a really kind of bluish colour, you can also add in lots of other colours. That was one of the tricks that pointer lists used to do. If something was blue, you would often see that there were other tinier dots of other colours in there. So I'm going to start by adding in some green because the sea is kind of a bluey green colour. I think I'll add in a bit of red now. I think the trick is to experiment with all of your pens and all of your paints that you have and just see what works really well for you. I'm going to carry on with the sea a bit later on, but now I'm going to move on to the sky. Now I want some clouds to be in this sky, so what I'm going to do with probably one of my lighter colours is do like a dotted outline of where I think the clouds should be, and then I will know to not put dots in those clouds. So I think I will use, I use this blue, and I'll say that there should be a cloud. Oh, that's a bit darker than I thought. I think I'll use this purple instead, and I'll just carry on and do because it's a very light purple, and just do some like cloud outline shapes. They don't have to be perfect because you're going to be doing dots all the way around these. And then what I'm going to do is the sky in a similar way that I do the sea. I'm going to have the sky starting light and then going a bit darker towards the top. And I'm going to use all sorts of colours, some oranges and reds and yellows, mainly blues, but also a lot of other colours too. And there you have it, my Surat inspired seascape. It'd be great to see yours. Remember, probably the most important of all of the P's is patience, because it does take quite a lot of time. Uh, and mums and dads, if they are doing this, go and pour yourself a drink, uh, come back in an hour or two. And when they've finished, share them with me. Use the hashtag OlafArt.
whistle, grab a brush, we're about to do Art Club! Right, I personally think that if you've made a picture and it's great, the best thing to do is to put a frame around it. And what I'm gonna do now is show you how to make quite a cool paper picture frame. In fact, if you've just done your Surat inspired scenery, it's upside down, then it would be great to pop it inside this frame. I'll show you what I mean. I start with a piece of paper. I've got a bit of colored paper here, but it can be any paper you like. And I'm gonna add a bit of a wood grain effect and I'm gonna use two blue colors, and I'm gonna use the light one first and just go up and down, quite rough, to kind of give a bit of a wood grain effect. And do it on this edge. It really doesn't have to be that neat. And it doesn't have to go to the middle because we're gonna cut out the middle bit. And do the top and the bottom. Keep all of your lines going in the same direction. And then I'm gonna use my other color blue. And again, just do some lines like this. Don't have to be too hard. You don't have to be too neat. It's just to give the impression of some wood grain. And once you're done doing that, what we're gonna do is turn it over and we're gonna start marking it up so we know which bit to cut out exactly. Now for this, you will need a pencil and you'll need a ruler. I've got two rulers. One of them is this really tiny Star Wars ruler and the other one is this massive ruler. So I've got nothing in between, but don't worry. Uh, get your picture that you want to put in this frame. Mine's going to be my seascape that I did earlier. Try and get it in the middle as close as you can to being in the middle. It doesn't matter so much up and down, but left or right, try and get it in the middle. So, and try and line it up nice and straight. And once you think it's kind of roughly in the middle this way, just put a little dot in each corner where the picture touches the background. And then you can move your picture away and then use your ruler to join those dots. Now we're gonna be cutting this middle bit out, but we want our frame to overlap the picture a little. So we need to measure. I'm gonna use my small ruler now to do a bit of measuring. And I'm gonna have a one centimeter overlap, I think. Is that gonna be, yeah, one centimeter. So I'll measure one centimeter from that line on the inside and I'll put a little dot there. And then I'll just move along a bit and do another dot. And we'll do that on every line. So just one centimetre and a dot. One centimetre and a dot. And turn it around. One centimetre and a dot. And the last one. And then I'll get my big ruler back. And this time I will line up my ruler alongside the two dots on each side and just draw a line like that. And then do the same on this edge. Line up my ruler with the dots. Just do a line like that. What I'll also do is align the other side. So line up the two dots. Do a line along there and then do a line on the other side. And then line up with the two dots. Do a line along there and then a line along the other side. Now, what we're gonna do next is use scissors. Always be careful when you're using scissors. Don't go juggling them or swallowing them or anything else stupid. If you are quite young, you might wanna get a grown up to help you. And the first thing we're gonna do is cut along those outside lines.
Now the next thing we want to do is cut out this rectangle right in the middle. Now it's quite tricky to cut stuff out of the middle. So here's a little tip. What you need to do, turn it over and fold your corners till they match. But when you do the fold, start by pressing in the middle here and then fold out and out, but not all the way. Don't fold on the bits that will be your frame because we don't want to get them creased. And then all you need to do is cut along this bit here and turn it over and do the same here. All the way to that first line, not to the second one, the first one. And then when you open it up, it should be something like that. And then we repeat that, but we go along this way. So we line up our long edge, turn this around, line up our long edge and we press down in the middle, all the way to about there, all the way to about there. Try not to crease. If you do crease your frame on the out edge, it doesn't matter too much because we're gonna be decorating it, but you cut along this one to about there, and then flip it over and you cut along this one to about there. If this gets a bit tricky, ask a grown up to help. And when you open it out, you should have something like that. If you have got little creases in there, you can always kind of bend them back the other way and that gets rid of them. And like I say, we will be decorating it. Now, for the decorating, the first thing I'm gonna do is get my little ruler back and I'm gonna get my blue pencil. I'm gonna use the longer one this time. And I'm gonna draw a diagonal line that goes from this corner to this corner. And we're gonna do four of those. So one, two, three, four. Actually, I'm gonna get my big ruler back now because I'm gonna do some lines that just follow these lines. So probably about, I don't know what that is, half a centimeter and just draw along like that. Trying to keep it as level with the inside hole as you can and go from diagonal line to diagonal line. Like that, and we do that on all the four sides. Now it's just gonna be a case of adding some like fancy details and decorations. All I would say is, I think frames do work a bit better when the designs that you do are quite symmetrical, by which I mean, whatever you do on one side, you flip and you do on the other side. For example, if I was to draw right in the middle of this side, a leaf shape, I would also do one on this side as well. I might also do one on the middle of this one. And on the middle of this one. I'm gonna carry on now adding loads of different fancy details. I'm gonna add like some scroll shapes, some squiggly scrolls. Uh, I'm gonna add some dots, some more leaves. And I'm just gonna fill the whole thing and try and keep it as symmetrical as possible. that's your frame done, all you need to do now is turn it over, find your picture and put it face down in the rectangle that is there and using a bit of sellotape, stick all four sides down. And there you go. I think you'll agree that makes your picture look at least 33.333% better. And you don't have to put your pointillism picture in there. You can put any picture you want inside your frame. Here's one that I did earlier. Is Europe like a frying pan? <laughs> because it has grease on the bottom. <laughs> and that joke has come from Amma. Right, 
You may remember, unless of course you have the memory of a goldfish, that at the beginning of this show, we started drawing a pirate parrot and I told you I was gonna do a companion for him. Well, I wanted something that kind of sort of rhymes with pirate parrot. Uh, if you take the letter P off pirate, it makes the word irate. Now, if you don't know what irate means, unfortunately, you're gonna be learning. <laughs> you're going to be learning something new. Irate is another word for angry or annoyed. Ugh. So I'm going to be drawing an irate carrot. So it's going to be a pirate parrot and an irate carrot. Try saying that to yourself 12 times really quickly. Pirate parrot, irate carrot, pirate parrot, irate carrot, pirate pa You're probably going to be better than I am at that. Anyway, let's crack on. We're going to do the carrot. Now the carrot is going to be stood next to him and the carrot shape is a line along the top. I'm gonna to do that in line with the pirate's hat there. And his body is gonna come down. He's gonna be a very similar size to the parrot. So it will start to curve back. And instead of going all the way up, I think I'm gonna have him irate or angry because the parrot has taken a bite out of him. So what I'll do next is a bite mark. It's almost like three little bits like that. And then, join the carrot shape up. I'm gonna draw some eyes, but I'm also gonna draw some eyebrows. And if you remember from earlier, the eyebrows, he's quite angry, so they're gonna be a bit like that. They're not too much like that, I'm just a little bit like that. And sprouting out the top of his head, I'm gonna draw the green bit of the carrot. I'll give him a little mouth, it's kind of open like this. And I'll just draw a line like that, which is gonna be his teeth. He's gonna be saying something, he's annoyed. Because he's annoyed, I think I'm gonna have his hands kind of like that on his sides, like he's going, why have you eaten me? Or something like that. So if I draw a curve, and then before it comes back, so it's gonna be his arm like this. This side is gonna to touch his body. And then around about here, I'm gonna draw a finger, and then a curved bit and then join the hand back up. And we're gonna do the same on the other side. It's just like symmetrical. It's gonna be the flip side. So we'll start by doing that curve, but not all the way. And then this one curves back and goes all the way to there. And then we do the little finger coming out there, the curved shape, and then we join that back up. I'm gonna do him two little carroty feet, and I'm gonna try and make them in line with the parrots. So one of them is going to be here and the next one is going to be next to it here. Now all I need to do is using a thinner pen, I might use this one here, is just add in a few little lines. You get these kind of lines around the carrot, just little texture lines that some of them go off one side, some of them in the middle, and some of them go off the other side. And then I'm also gonna do the skull and crossbones on the top of the parrot's hat. It's a round shape for the top of the skull. And then when it gets to about there, it goes off into a little square shape. And then I'm gonna draw two kind of solid black circles for the eyes. The nose is gonna be two kind of smaller blobs. And then I draw a line across the bit there and I just draw a few more lines. This will kind of give the effect of teeth. And then I need to draw the bones that are kind of making the cross at the back behind. So I'll draw one there and that continues there. And then I draw another one sort of there and that continues there. And I think what I'll do now is colour it in and also perhaps have at least one of them saying something. You can have them saying whatever you like. You don't have to have your carrot being bitten into. He can be annoyed for another reason. Uh, make it as fun as you like and colour it in whatever colours you like. Make the parrot nice and bright though, I think. I'm going to hit fast forward.
And there we go, a pirate parrot and an irate carrot. And the irate carrot is saying, first I have to appear on this rubbish art show and then I get eaten by a parrot. Frankly, this is the worst day of my life. You know what? I think that carrot's quite annoying. I would have probably eaten him too. I hope you draw some great pictures too. Make sure you can get your mums and dads to share them with me on Twitter. <laughs> Clunky edit alert. I realise I've not given you guys a special code phrase so you can win my drawing. If you would like to win my pirate para irate carrot drawing, I would like you to go into the comments below this video and I would like you to put in the seven P's of pointillism, not the words, the seven P's of pointillism, what the actual seven P's of pointillism are. You might remember that my last two were picture of a pineapple or something like that. Uh, you don't have to do that. In fact, I will give the drawing to whoever comes up with the best seven P's. So the first five need to be the actual five, but the last two you can customize and whoever comes up with the funniest ones, you could win the prize. Facebook, make sure you use the hashtag Olaf Art. That way I can find them more easily. Uh, have fun. Well, unfortunately, that is the end of Art Club episode nine. Aww. Don't worry, there's gonna be another show coming up next Monday, so make sure you tune in for that. Please do me a huge favor, okay? Make sure you tell people. If your kids are going back to school, make sure they tell their teachers, make sure they tell their schools about Art Club. It would be great to get loads of people watching. Uh, also, make sure you tell your friends, uh, keep sending in your pictures, and make sure you use the hashtag OlafArt. Uh, what else is there? Click subscribe if you haven't already, please. Click like, uh, comment with your best jokes, okay? And comment if you've liked the show. Tell me what you like, tell me what you don't like. Make some suggestions for what we could draw next week. That'd be quite cool too. What else is there? I think that's about it. All I need to do is say bye. We always try and do something stupid at the end. What can we do? Oh, I know. I've still got that cat from earlier. So if I use this cat and... Oh, I've got an old tripod here, a few paint brushes. Just extend that out there. You get under my arm. Bye.